there and welcome to Force Talk, a Star Wars podcast. And we've got the full crew back together for tonight's episode. Lots of stuff to cover. There's um, loads of really cool stuff in the Star Wars news we're going to be covering. We're also going to be uh, discussing another beloved character from the Star Wars universe in Chosen Ones. And we're sharing with you the last two interviews from Star Wars Fan Fun Day. Lots to do. Let's get on with it. Okay, Star Wars news. Loads of stuff to be looking at here. Um, first of all, the famous Annie Leibovitz has done another another shoot for uh, Vanity Fair magazine. So let's take a look at these pictures. So we're going to look at the covers first. There's um, a number of different covers to collect. That's all you can buy for. Make them more money. Um, first one, we've got a great shot of Rey and Luke Skywalker. Um, is that... You Oh, you can just about make out this uh, this brown glove that he's wearing. Can you see that there? Mm -hmm. It becomes clear in some of the other pictures. But um, yeah, Ray's pretty much wearing the outfit that she arrives in. I mean, do we definitely know that's a glove? Because like, there may not be toilet paper on Act 2. <laughs> oh, God. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely a glove, Nicholas. <laughs> Right, so yeah, so Ray's pretty much like wearing the Force Awakens outfit, and it looks like it, it looks like they've just stepped out of that that final scene of the Force Awakens, doesn't it? Pretty much. Um, the next one um, we've got Kylo Ren, uh, General Hux, and um, Captain Phasma, but without the helmet this time. Mm -hmm. So we actually get to see her face. Now, do you think? Do we think she's gonna whip that helmet off? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, because yeah, really. she was so disappointing and. The Force Awakens, won't she? So they need to flesh out the character, so... I think, yeah. I think it's time to reveal her face. Also, additional thing of new action figure. So that'll mm. be why. Yeah. If, if you're going to do it, that'll be why. Yes, that's true. They've got they've got, they've got got uh, figures to flog. I'm quite so surprised general... that's her look, though. I thought they'd have gone something a bit less Game of Thrones style. Well, they can't really yeah. change her face, can they? No, it's just the blonde hair, though. It's, I think, you think they'd have gone dark might, or something? Yeah, might have gone for a bit... Something a bit different. Yeah, but. still is a little bit. Um, General Hooks looks pretty much the same, although he's got his, his hair looking a bit slicker. Mm -hmm. Another look at Kylo Ren with his uh, with his moving scar there as well, of course. Yeah, his new cape. Oh, and his new cape, Darth yeah. Darth Vader style cape. Longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. hmm. Cool. Oh, and it looks like she's got a big silver staff as well yeah. this time. It's interesting how the villains are unmasked in this film. Yeah. Mm. Makes a change. Again? Figures. Figures, yeah. So, <laughs> the reason so looking at the next picture... Um, Poe's got a new coat. Yeah, Poe looking remarkably like Han Solo with mm. the exactly the same shirt. And Do you the approve? Pose. Do you and approve? the pose. Do I approve? No! <laughs> <laughs> it's very... Um... Do I approve of them making all of the ma slightly cool characters look like Han Solo mm. like they did with Cassian in Rogue One? <laughs> yeah. It's very Return of the Jedi. There is it? one Han Solo. It might just be a look in the galaxy. I mean, there's two now. Well, sorry. Yeah, but there is. There is no. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I'm still just pretending that that's not happening until the film comes out. We'll yeah. just wait and see. Um, and it's the first time we've got a good look at. Uh, sorry, what's the female Rose? actress's name's Rose. name? Oh, Kelly Marie Tran. Kelly Marie Tran uh, is character, and. Obviously, they're hanging out there, so it looks like... Well, it seems obvious that her and Finn are going to have like quite a bit of time together yeah. at an yeah. adventure. Possibly a romance. Possibly. I just hope... <laughs> Although Finn and Poe are looking quite close nope. in, that, in that picture. Yeah, I just hope they've stitched his jacket up, because that's still Poe's jacket that he was wearing when he fought Kylo Ren, isn't it? So that's true. It's a bit shame he can't afford a new jacket, really. Yeah. So... I mean, it is a cool jacket. It's probably worth salvaging if you can. Can you, yeah. can you stick leather in a back to tank? Would that still work? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. Why not? So he also has feelings for Poe if she's kept that jacket for that long and it's all mm. skanky and blood-stained. Oh, my so God. wearing Poe's jacket. It's all right. It's okay. Don't worry. He might be, you might know. Be he's all yeah. yours. He might, be st he might be space bisexual. You never know. <laughs> space bisexual? Space. You know, like Carrie Fisher always used to say, like, Space before everything. Which oh, is right, like we were right, going yeah. through a space divorce, and you know all that yeah, kind of stuff. So yeah. you just have to stick space in front of anything like that. I think you know when you're dealing with Star Wars, and obviously thermal exhaust pods. But let's not yeah, no, those no, jokes no, again. No, no. <laughs> Carrie Fisher, the late great Carrie Fisher, there as um, Princess Leia, General Leia. Um, it's looking a lot more regal mm. in uh, in this particular film. 
Yeah, it's a great picture, that, isn't it? It's it is quite nice. Does anybody have any theories as to why her outfit is so dark? Yeah, I think it's just mm. uh, an official robe, really. I don't think you can mm. read anything into it necessarily on the cover. And yet people always oh, do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're bound to, aren't they? <coughs> what do you think? She has become a, a grey general in between. <laughs> Maybe. Definitely not grey. So. <laughs> well, yeah, it still it's looks, it all looks pretty cool. Um, so we've been through those. Now, this... Let's go into these pictures of um, the characters. We've got this, like... Um, I believe it's uh, some yeah. sort of space casino. Mm. Is, it, is that what it is? It is. It's on the new uh, casino planet. Um, Canto something? Oh, I forgot the name. Just made up words, mate. It's, <laughs> it's <laughs> Derp and Lab 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 for the planet of Havre, yeah. But uh, yeah, probably, probably we're supposed to be seeing the sort of more higher levels of society now in this film. Instead of like the grungy, yeah, massacred cantinas, we're now seeing the, you know, the, the hoi polloi. Yeah, that the makes, galaxy. Nice that makes sense because. Um, Canto Bite, it's just come to me. B I G H T. You're all probably going to. Correct Handle makes it probably it. wrong. But See, Michael's been doing his homework on holiday. Um, but when yeah, that's, this... that's interesting. That because, like, like you say, we've never really sort of seen the uh, the Star Wars, the space bourgeoisie. No, no, have mm. we? No thing is, when I saw this, <clears throat> I th first I thought it was something from Doctor Who. It didn't look very Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. Some of the aliens look, look a bit a like bit they've just walked off you know, the BBC set. There's, I want to see some original. Twi'leks and Rodians and some of the original aliens that were like throughout the original saga. Mm -hmm. They seem to have I get forgotten that, about them now. But also at the same time, space is pretty big. We're not going to keep seeing the same species. Although, that being said, we always see humans. Mm. So <laughs> humans are yeah. pretty common. So it's good that there's some new looking characters. But mm. Yeah, it does. It also feels a little bit um... clean. No. Well, yeah, but it also feels a little bit like Fifth Element. Yeah, vibe yeah. as well to yeah, it. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I I think it'd be interesting to see another level of, of society, like you say, in this film. Yeah. It's a lady uh, who looks like Peter Kane, one of the pictures as well. Which well, is uh, interesting. We never know. Star Wars <laughs> car share it's coming up. Yeah. Um, so there's a shot of Kylo Ren swinging his um, lightsaber. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> There's not really much you can say about that. I mean, it no. just looks like Carlo Ren yeah. swinging a lightsaber. Um, I love the the black and white shot yeah. of um, Mark like Hamill, Carrie Fisher, Kathleen Kennedy with Ryan, Ryan Johnson. Johnson. I said Ryan last week because I, I, I like to mispronounce everybody's names. But with an I, really, it's Ryan, I was on isn't holiday yeah. watching the show and I was like, it's Ryan. If you want to be called Ryan, spell it with a Y, mate. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> Um, As you know, get invited to the premiere. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we, we, we've got to blame his parents, not uh, not Ryan. But yeah, I, lo I, lo I love <laughs> I love that shot. Um, obviously, the uh, the famous Star Wars dogs oh, yeah. visible in the picture mm -hmm. there, Gary. And is it Millie, um, Mark Hamill's yeah. dog? I think it, I think it is Millie. Yeah. So that's really nice. Um, just going back through. Uh, there's a picture of uh, Anthony Daniels with um, what looks like the, uh, the robot team. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, must I, I don't know what your feelings on it. Do you, th do you think he does all of the C-3PO stuff on set still now? I think he probably does. Do I mean, think he, doesn't he, has... really, he didn't do much in the Force Awakens anyway, did he? Yeah. No. He's around got a bit, else so. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to say that the beloved Anthony Daniels has done nothing else but Star Wars? <laughs> you must remember him when he was in... Or when he did whatever else it was other than Star Wars. That's seven or got invited to the premiere. <laughs> <laughs> Just you mean it. I, eat around I thought that being said, I, I did make a joke about Luke wiping his... But with his own hands. You did. So that's probably me not getting by. <laughs> I don't know why you, got you. That as well. you did. You did. Still, there you go. It's, it's exactly why I just keep washing this and mm -hmm. save, <laughs> save on toilet paper. <laughs> Recycling, save the planet. <laughs> anyway, back to the phone. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so we're in the uh, we're in the cockpit. Of, so, I, hey, what what did you you knew about? What, what else? Anthony Daniels was in I Bought a Vampire Motorcycle. Wow. Mm. With Michael Elphick and Neil Morris. So, well, there you go. 
Call yourself complete. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's the other thing you did. There you go. Still um, never heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you were meant to. Okay. She's not even heard of Alan Partridge. <laughs> um, right. So there's a picture of uh, Chewie and Ray in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon. Again, looks pretty much like um, they've just arrived from. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, one of the last shots of The Force Awakens. Um, or could be going off on a new adventure. Could be going off on a new adventure. Um, Where's Luke, though? That's oh. true. Dead. Although could it's be in the can. Just, I, I'm assuming the Millennium Falcon has a toilet. Oh, yeah. yeah I think With so. fresh toilet paper. Exactly. Like, oh my God! Isn't like isn't like isn't like a isn't like a droid in the in the toilet that sort of just takes care like a jet wash takes care of that for you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a biddy, a biddy droid. Like like you know, bag to bag to fluid gets shot at you. We have we have actually seen our first ever Star Wars toilet in Rebels. What? Really? That was, that was a debut for this last that. season. There was our first ever Star Wars toilet. We we get to see an Imperial officer having a whiz. So does that then mean that everybody poops is now canon? Yeah. Oh Excellent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Luna would be glad to hear that. Um, yeah, so it still feels kind of, I don't know, it, it still looks like brand new that. It still feels kind of weird mm. that it's not like Han Solo mm. and Chewie at the, at the controls. I think you need to accept that Han's I know, I know. Chewie will never die though because <clears throat> it's just a book in a costume and therefore endless marketing. <laughs> there you go. Uh, don't get, yeah, let's not get me started on what, how they mistreated the uh, legacy cast when it came to uh, merchandising for uh, False Awakens. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Go on, there wasn't any. Well. There wasn't any. There wasn't <laughs> well, any. That, uh, Elite Series Han Solo. Yeah, but those came so much later. When the film came yeah, out. That's true. That's true. Everything was the, 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 the new main characters uh, BBA, C3PO, R2D2, and Chewie. No Luke Skywalker, mm. no Co Fisher. I, th I think at the time, no like, Han Solo. especially in the early days of the film, they probably considered it a spoiler. Uh, it is still weird that there's no Luke Skywalker now, but they're probably just holding off to the last Jedi, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I guess so. Still, um, the pictures of um, the, the picture of Mark and Kerry together is really yeah, it's great. Quite that. lovely, um, and you can see you can see the leather glove there, obviously that's covering up his his robot hand. Mm -hmm. Really great picture of Kerry with. Um, Billy Lord, so we can assume that maybe her character is um, expanded in the next film. Yeah, um, that's really about. I love this uh, the shot of Ray as well doing training. Yeah. I think that's my favorite shot of the. Yeah, uh, that's cool. And favorite shot the, of the set. The shots of um, ah, yes. first look at Laura Dern and Benicio del Toro. Del Toro. He's playing someone's just referred to as DJ, but apparently we don't hear his name in the film. Apparently we know, we know why. When we watch it, everybody's so, speculating that it's Dark like Jedi. I, I'm just thinking it's disc jockey. Sort of. Yeah, I just think it's disc jockey. I think he's just got like a... That was my impression of a DJ, by the way. Is that... <laughs> what do you want to do about <laughs> DJ Michael I'm in the mix. I'm not going to any of your concerts. <laughs> wasn't this... Wasn't the, I, did I see some um, daft fan theory that compared uh, Benicio Del Toro's character to um, the guy from Rebels? Ezra. Oh, Ezra. Yeah, I mean, no, not yeah. Ezra. The um, oh. I don't think it not was Ezra. Ezra. Like I have heard a prevailing theory that he will be playing Ezra, but whether that right is the case, it I think it'll just be a new kind of bounty hunter type character. His, his costume's quite gritty, into it, sort of a bit Han Solo esque, and yeah, he looks cool. But then Benicio del Toro always looks cool. Um, but what about Laura Dern's character? I mean, that's Pink she's hair. definitely yeah, part of this. Yeah. Um, I'm loving the hair. She's definitely part of this. Um, the elite, elite resistance. Resistance. Yeah, leader. She looks very Hunger Games, I think, in that. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't think I've really seen that many characters with you know funky pink or no. green hair or anything like that. No. It's ne quite, never an artificial. It's hair quite sci-fi. An alien. <laughs> so <laughs> this is our first human with artificial hair coloring. Mm. Do you like the dress, Sarah? Yes. Would you wear it? No. I think you'd see it more. And what did, what did we say her character's name was? No, it's been revealed. Vice Admiral Holto. Hol Holdo? Holto. Vice Admiral Holdo. 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 Right, yeah. so Holdo. do we think there's obviously going to be some kind of um, maybe a bit of a face down yeah, between her and. Clash with Leia. Clash with Leia, so. Yeah. Should be interesting. So, all in all, 
pretty good stuff. Yep. Um, right, so let's move on to the next news article. About a, this, well, we, this is this won't be our fault that we, if we've not invited to the premiere because this is from the words from the, from the mouth of the beloved Mark Hamill. This is from Movie Web. Adam Driver refused to hang out with Mark Hamill. What? How could who, anyone refuse? To who hang out does with Mark not Hamill? want to hang out with the Hamill? What is that all about? Right. So apparently, uh, well, he's got a reputation. Um, like Jared Leto, where he's just taking things too far on set and stuff like that. Um, so Mark Hamill had good intentions of hanging out with Driver. Um, his character, Luke Skywalker, is uncle to Driver's Kylo Ren. Uh, Hamill thought it might be a good idea for them to get to know each other, uh, get the on-screen rapport going and stuff like that. Driver felt differently. Um, so is this where we get the quote from? This was uh, actually in the Vanity Fair article, but we're quoting it from Movie Web. Uh, I remember saying to Adam, I don't know how you work or your technique, but at some point you were my nephew. I probably bounced you on my knee. I probably babysat for you. There's that side, and now we're both estranged from the Skywalker family. All I'm suggesting is, if you'd like, maybe we could go to lunch. We could get together and hang out. Mm. Oh. And Adam Driver, Driver said, said, no. no. <laughs> What a Hamill's reaction to that, to that was <laughs> more power to him. He said, there's uh, big personal things that I find about every character, not just in Star Wars, that you have to make as personal as possible. It's the big joke about being an actor that you make everything you're doing seem like it's life or death. The thing about that character that I find painful, that I really relate to, I kind of prefer to keep to myself. So, AKA, spoilers. Yeah. <laughs> so he just kind of... Uh, didn't want to hang out with Mark Hamill. To me, though, if he's if he's taken that approach, he mm -hmm. should have gone out because he is Luke's nephew, and they, like Mark Hamill yeah. says, they would have hung out. So yeah. then, then it would kind of build the character more than just yeah. trying to be angry all the time. So yeah, yeah, but had to go for lunch with him. Exactly, calls himself a method actor. Indeed, I don't know. Um, so there's. Um, I mean, he, I suppose he could have just method acted that he was younger and like Luke was his uncle, and we were going out for ice cream. I mean, I'm sure that happened. <laughs> yeah. So, unless Mark actually did mean he wanted to sit Adam Driver on his knee and bounce him up and down. Oh. Maybe, maybe that's <laughs> space ice cream. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I've not met the guy, so I don't know if he's difficult yet, but. I mean, we've also not met Mark Hamill. Mark Hamill might have some weird quirks. I have met Mark Hamill. Of. Yeah, but... Only very briefly. Yeah, briefly. yeah, but you're not really the most normal of people, are you? No, that's true. He did actually mention that when I met him. Um, no. So he is an asshole. <laughs> 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 no, we talked about Lauren Hardy. Oh, fair Very briefly, because he's a big Lauren Hardy fan, so... Um, right, so the, the other piece of news was... Uh, this is from Den of Geek about... Um, Star Wars 9 would have been Carrie Fisher's yeah. film. So Kathleen Kennedy basically confirmed that... And it and it seemed to... After, after they made Han Solo the focus of the first film, I yeah. said, well, they're obviously... This is going to be a thing now. It'll mm. be Han Solo, Luke, Luke Skywalker... And Leia. And, mm. and Leia made sense. But apparently she sort of, uh, Carrie Fisher did sort of um, lean on Kathleen Kennedy and said, uh, yeah. you know, this film better be, better be mine. Yeah, I think Kathleen Kennedy said she'd be front and centre in of episode nine. So that being said, though, there has been another uh, news thing that I've read this week that said Ryan Johnson wrote the script for uh, episode eight, and they had no pre-planned thing for. Yeah, it. So I yeah. find that really hard so, to believe. I can't believe. That. I find that worrying that is as the well. Case. I don't think they'd just. I, I don't Force find Awakens. it so worrying. I find that reassuring because that means if. Episode Nine was meant to be Leia's film. That was very vague in concept. Like, they didn't have any real plans. I just for find it. it really unlikely, though, that they've started a new trilogy and not known where it's going to end. I don't think you write The Force Awakens and just say, right, Ryan, there you go. We have no idea what's happening next. Yeah, but Michael, <laughs> JJ Abrams, mm. lost. Yeah, but. <laughs> Lost. So, I don't. I, the I TV just, show. Oh. It basically started oh, out with all these right. questions. Oh, right. Sorry, sorry. None of them got resolved. I think Kathleen Kennedy's a bit more. But... 
in, in control. I mean, when you look at George Lucas, say what you want about the prequels, you knew exactly the story arc yeah. from beginning to end. And mm. you wing, I think he winged it a bit on the original trilogy, because I don't think it was quite necessarily no. planned out that Luke and Leia were brother and sister until we turned the Jedi. But I think if they haven't planned out where they're going yet, mm. it seems a bit unlikely. But I just think if, if they have planned Episode Nine to be Leia's film, it's almost like making me dread seeing Episode Nine now, because if they're yeah. going to have to rewrite it and change change the whole story arc just to... Mm. To me, to me, it makes it feel more like there's a, a stronger case, more so now than ever, for them to recast Leia, so that we get the story they wanted to tell, rather than just fudging and fudging it. Mm. So, so kind of, I'm really nervous now about episode nine. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah, want to watch I it. I think everybody's. Uh, it's it's kind of the same situation that uh, like the Dark Knight was in, falling into the Dark Knight Rises, because obviously the original plan was Heath Ledger was going to be a big yeah. part of that film. And then obviously he died, so everything just went up in the air. And they still got a decent film out of it, but you know it wasn't their like number one plan. Mm. So because there's bound to have been that confrontation between Leia and Kylo Ren at some point. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get that in eight. So yeah, it will it'll just feel really, well, really absent. Something. I think from the trilogy, mm. if you never got to see Kylo confront mm. his mum, or who knows? But yeah, I mean it's. Um, it's a tricky one, I'm just, isn't it? I'm, less, I'm definitely less against recasting, though. I'm sure there's a few actresses out there that could <sighs> do justice to the character of Leia. I think, I think I, it serves the character right to complete the story rather I know, than I know the, just write her off. It, to be honest, like I'd, I'd be okay with recasting, but only if they did a Grand Moff Tarkin job and made it at least try and look like Carrie Fisher. Because yeah. I think I, it'd, it'd be really be, yeah. off-putting for me to go yeah. into the film and just try and accept a new char- like a new actress as Leia. Nah. Especially Kay if it is like following on from it's, it's like for the first couple of Harry Potter films, like you've got for changing actor from uh, I forget what the original one's called, but to, Dumbledore, yeah. Well, I know it's Dumbledore, but I think, to be honest, I've got both of the actors' names, but yeah, that that yeah. change it's like wasn't as big of a deal because it wasn't such an integral character, but obviously, Leia is a massive deal in Star Wars, so mm. yeah, yeah, can't really it's do tr- that. It's tricky, isn't it? I'm against the recasting, but we'll see. I suppose it'll end very much depend on how episode eight ends. Yeah, and if it feels like there's just really hanging storyline where something it just ends where you need to know what happens to Leia, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. they'll have to do something. They can't just then. It'd be like getting to the end of Empire Strikes Back and then saying opening crawl. Oh, Han died when he was frozen, you know. Or <laughs> right, yeah. Luke fell off Bespin after all, and you know you you need to know what happens to that character. Yeah. Mm. Um, so it depends, I think, what they do in eight. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So um, I think that's uh, that's. Let, oh, that's let go. Let oh, go. yeah. I'm not. We're not going to show the picture, though, folks. Spoiler alert. We're not going to show the picture because the quality is atrocious. But um, so, no spoiler alert. So, <laughs> no, but yeah. Apparently, they've 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 kind of it's leaked that one of the um, the boxes for one of the new Star Wars Lego. Uh, sets has got like a picture of Supreme Leader S- Snoke yeah. looking in spoiler gold. alert looking like um, like he's got gold robes fancy on. gold robes I love gold looking like yeah. Supreme Leader gold, gold member, member. <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean he's going to be sort of uh, up for a smoking opulent. a pancake yeah smoking <laughs> a pancake sort of storing his his shedding his shedding skin, skin eating, eating it, it and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. That'd be quite interesting. They've lost me now, actually. I don't yeah, know. I don't know what <laughs> have you not seen that film? It's a good film. I have no idea what film you're even talking about. Goldman. There's really no point making any pop culture references in this show. <laughs> 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 Should we we'll just do those ones Are you separately? Not Austin Powers? <laughs> yes, Austin Powers. Why can you say uh, that? That's what I said, gold member. You said gold member, not Austin Powers. I see what you were thinking. Right, okay. <laughs> I think Goldfinger <laughs> it kind of went into a different direction because you said member. And there's a black BB-8 in there. Oh, yes, it's... there's a black BB-8. So mm. I always thought the Force Awakens when you saw BB-8, there was going to be lots of other little BB units rolling around. I thought it was a bit odd that there was just the the one. I don't think there yeah, would just in, be one that would be quite a lot. I think there was only one no, was R2-D2. Just, no, there's no, there's no, R2 about was two's. normal Astro. Yeah, like Astro a, you have in base, there's R2 units everywhere. Yeah, so but did they all have different heads, though? 
Well, like, yeah, they're all different colours, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, none of them had the R2, dome, yeah. did they? I was, waiting for, I was waiting for the merchandise for the yeah, the green BB-8 and the blue BB-7. And oh, yeah. I thought they'd be that like... So it makes sense there's more point. than just one. They'll get round to it. So, They've yeah. got to sell more more robot figures, man. So I don't think it's a big shock that there's another BB unit out there. No. It's a bit, That'll be for Sphero. So Maybe it'll be like getting another yeah, one of those little. Exactly. Maybe it'll be a Kylo Ren's uh, BB-8 or yeah. whatever. So before we get out of here, um, with regards to that, let's give another mention to the uh, Club Star Wars mm-hmm. competition. Um, remember, the idea is to create a um, unique piece for the uh, Xbox Club Star Wars background. It's and I messed this up last week. Oh, Matt did when he sent the thing over. It should be 1920 by 1080. And uh, you need to uh, quote your uh, Xbox user handle. Gamertag. Gamertag. Thank you. Thank you for speaking fluent gamer, which I clearly don't. Um, <laughs> and you could send, you could submit your uh, efforts to clubstarwars at outlook.com. Thank you very much. Okay, now it's time for Chosen Ones, and I'll now hand you over to Michael, who's going to tell you who our Chosen One is. Yeah, well, this time we are talking about Mr. Sheev Palpatine, a.k.a. Darth Sidious, a.k.a. the Emperor. Um, Obviously, he's been in every film from episode one to six, more just mentioned in episode four, briefly seen in episode five, but certainly present in Return of the Jedi. Um, Obviously, most of you know who Palpatine is. If you've watched any of the films, you should have a good idea, basically. Um, he's obviously a senator from Naboo, Queen Amidala's home planet, um, and he rose to power during the events of the Clone Wars. He, as Darth Sidious, was responsible for bringing the invasion of Naboo, um, manipulating things behind the scene with the Trade Federation, um, and then he was voted as Supreme Chancellor he then manipulated things further. He actually created the Clone War itself and was responsible for gaining more emergency and executive powers until he declared himself Emperor in Revenge of the Sith. And as you all know, he groomed Anakin really from a young age and always had eyes on him as being his main apprentice, obviously because he probably knew he was the chosen one. Um, and then as Emperor, he had his reign of terror, ruling the galaxy with an iron fist until Vader threw him down a pit at the end of Return the Jedi. So, I don't think there's much more to say about... She's <laughs> down a shaft. She's down a shaft. <laughs> so, yeah, a few items of discussion, really, to throw up into the panel. And um, I'll start with something I always thought was a bit... slightly strange when you think about it. That he actually came from the nice garden planet of Naboo, where he probably mm. spent his youth rowing around in a little boat on a lake and chasing Amidala... Oh, no, she would have been a little girl, so hopefully not <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you've already said grooming. Let's yeah, not yeah, do yeah, that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I just wonder what your thoughts are on how do you think he ended up becoming a Sith Lord? I mean, how would Plagueis, if obviously Plagueis was his master, have maybe sensed him on Naboo? Or... Maybe he got groomed as well. So, go on, give us your thoughts, Sarah. <laughs> he got groomed. He got chosen, probably felt his presence. Plagueis found him. You're mine, done dusted. Yeah, taken off planet, do you think? Or? Mm, no. Naboo had plenty of crystal caves and all that, so he could have oh, right. got lured into one of them. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Well, Paddy? Do you... Well, um, did, so we know for a fact that he was born... Do we know he was born and raised on Naboo? Star Wars databank. I'm relying on the Star Wars databank. Right. So if, if they're wrong... Who knows? Everything's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, because yeah, he was senator of Naboo in The Phantom Menace as well, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 of course. And he's, you know, Queen Amidala always, when she addresses him in Phantom Menace, says, our people and mm-hmm. I'm returning home. So I think it's, yeah. always, it's always been known he's from Naboo. I just find it a bit just strange that he's come from such no, a nice is, place. It, <laughs> it, is, it is very weird, like you say. But I, I didn't know that about the caves, like you were saying. But I don't know, it would seem like it, he would need to be sort of Id- identified and then <laughs> taken somewhere else to become a yeah. Sith. It seems like... Well, those lovely waterfalls. A, yeah, and, a really yeah. nice place to be training to be a Sith Lord, doesn't well, it? Does you know? he, he doesn't mention anything about parents. Could it be possible that he was adopted by Plagueis? Um, possibly. Mm. I, d- I don't know if it's canon, but um, he apparently came from like a pretty rich family. Um, Most Imperial people do. Yeah. And apparently he murdered his parents. 
like yeah. when when he was uh, so, sort of like because f- f- from what I understand he sort of like started looking into the dark side on his own like and uh, I think he murdered his parents and that's when Plagueis sensed him so he was just like oh Hmm. A we ripple got, in the floor. We got, got a uh, new kid in town. Exactly <laughs> 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 Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so I think that's what sort of initially attracted him to him. Apparently, as well, uh, Palpatine had some dark side knowledge that even Plagueis didn't know about. Oh, right. This is all legends, so yeah, it's got, well, ultimately it's irrelevant. I mean, <laughs> also, so guys out here probably know <clears throat> probably more of the canon around Palpatine than I do, but I don't think they've explored that much yet. So sort of pre Phantom Menace, have they really? Mm. It's not like in canon, so we don't know his origins. I mean, yet, I mean to be fair, I, th- I think Palpatine is, would be gold for a standalone film. Yeah. Well, that, that's what I was going to ask. Would you see it maybe being um, one of these standalone films in the future? Would you like to see a Palpatine film or a Netflix uh, series? Absolutely. Netflix series. Netflix good. series would be good, but uh, I'd sell for a film. But the real question is like, I'm assuming we're doing young Palpatine, young she. Yeah, it'd have to be. Before Phantom Menace, wasn't it? So yeah. I know some people have said they'd like Tom Hiddleston, yeah. Hiddleston <laughs> to play him, so... Um, mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, complicated uh, Star Wars names again. Uh, to be <laughs> honest, I'd, I'd, I'd be okay with Tom Hiddleston playing Palpatine. Or Palpy, as I like to call it. Palpy! <laughs> well, I think it would make a good origin film, I think. Yeah. Yeah, because like you say, there's, there's, in, there's a hell of a lot of um, mystery around... Because it's less... You know he's going to turn to the dark side, so mm-hmm. that's probably less of the focus. It's maybe more... I don't think it was Why even a case of turning. I think he was just always bad. He is basically space Hitler. Like his rise to power completely just parallels Hitler's rise to power in the 1930s. Like mm. I think that was a very intentional thing that George Lucas did. Yeah. Especially in like uh, the way they had false so flag attacks and stuff like that. Are you trying to say that you he was born evil or he became evil? Nurtured um, nature. Mm, that's, that's a good question. Like, I, I don't think anybody's born evil. Like, just in general. Okay, so something clearly has happened, happened. to him. Too. Oh, it's that. interesting you say that. I heard a rumor that George Lucas's original idea for the TV series that he was going to do years back was going to be about Palpatine, and apparently, now take this with a pinch of salt. Cause I got this off, read this on the internet, but apparently it was about him being salt. young and being in love with. Um, a lady, presumably, um, mm. who then dies, and what the, the circumstances around the way he loses her turned him to the dark side. But I thought that was a bit, a bit it's just like Anakin, Anakin again. Mm. But I don't know how true that is, so it's just something I read he somewhere. Could have had his mind twisted by like a sip holocron or something. Mm. Yeah, I mean, there can be a myriad of reasons why somebody would sort of go that full evil because there wasn't like a shred of good in him, was this? So, no, no. I, th- I think as. As something that has to be nurtured over time and just like has that behaviour reinforced again and again and again. Well, the next question is something that it's always confused me slightly, so maybe you guys can actually help me make sense of this. In Return of the Sith, right? Where, revenge. Um, <laughs> sorry, Revenge. Oh dear. <laughs> revenge of the Sith, when he sat in the opera house with Anakin, mm-hmm. he tells Anakin the story of Darth Plagueis and he says, and I've written this down from memory, so hopefully I'm getting the quote exactly right. Um, it says Anakin, referring to Darth Plagueis, he taught his apprentice everything he knew, and then his apprentice killed him in his sleep. Mm-hmm. And shortly later, when Anakin's um, chopped Mace's hand off and um, Darth Sidious is stood there, he says, if we work together, I'm sure we can discover the secret, meaning the secret of saving yes. people from death. Yeah. So one of those has got to be a lie, because if, if Plagueis taught him everything he knew, he wouldn't need to work with someone to discover the secret. That's it. So which of those do you think is a lie, or...? Am I just overanalyzing it? You might be overanalyzing it. No, I, I, I you know, I, I did pick up on that as well because he, it's like, you know, he, he, he tricks Anakin into, into the dark side because he, you know, he thinks he's going to get that knowledge, and then the next minute when he does, he's like, actually, you know, I, I don't know that yet. But you got to work I'm, for it. I'm sure if we work together, we can discover it. You know, and mm. then he's like, what have I done? <laughs> So uh, yeah, um, I would I would be inclined to think that um, he doesn't know mm. how to do that. Yeah. Um, he maybe thought he discovered the answer from Plagueis, 
just before, reeling Anakin in, do you think? Before he killed him, and then afterwards it was too late. You know, he didn't he didn't find that out, or he was mm. just reeling Anakin in. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, it's hard to say, really, isn't it? Because I don't think you'd ever find out for definite which one it was. Like I, th I think for for the lie was probably the eternal life one. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think he ever knew. I don't think, I don't think Plagueis even knew. I also don't know. It's like it, it, if he managed to kill Plagueis, and it's obviously not all he cracked up yeah. to be. So I had a, a nice yeah. little theory when <laughs> Revenge of the, of the Sith first came out. Um, before I actually saw the film, I think there was um, some things that leaked, a few spoilers saying you know that you can cheat death. Mm. I was thinking he was when Anakin. And Obi Wan had their duel, and then Anakin was injured. I thought he was going to use his powers to well, bring Anakin back to life. Mm, like a, a, there, there is a, a precedent for that uh, in Legends, because I believe, uh, and you'll probably be an ex more of an expert on this than I am, so, but Exar Khan, I believe something similar happened to him with uh, like something falling on him, like messing up and using the dark side to basically heal himself. If that rings any bells, it's been a while since I've it read it. It has been a while well. since I've read anything on Exar Khan. Uh, don't remember anything falling on him. Uh, it may not have been that, but I, rem I remember there being something about um, him basically getting injured and then using the dark side to sort of like. I think he may have even like sat for life out of other living beings that are there mm. at the time. Sort of he like, did like manipulate and all sorts of stuff too. Yeah. Draw their energy. So I think that would have been a, a good way they could have done it. You know, and he, he finds Anakin on the lava and he sort of touches on his forehead. Yeah. I thought, oh, there's going to be like this mystical red sparkly yeah. stuff that's going to appear around Anakin now and he's bringing him back to life. And that would explain why in... Checking if he's well done. <laughs> <laughs> so, a bit of a pork cracker. Uh, um, <laughs> oh, going gold member on it. Yeah, um, again. But that would have explained at the end of Return of the Jedi why Vader dies when he's killed the Emperor as if the Emperor had been keeping him alive. But anyway, I digress. Ah. But, uh, mm. but, um, that would have been better. Mm. I always thought I never quite understood why a couple Tied. of zaps, a couple of zaps to Vader's life support would have killed him. Really, we keep but... saying this. These 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 podcasts are just basically our audition tape for uh, <laughs> to be on the Lucasfilm storyboard. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So to me, if that had been if it had actually been Palpatine keeping Vader alive using his dark side powers, mm. it would explain when when he killed Palpatine. That's why Vader died immediately after. But. Uh, I, we I, wish. I, I understand that. Died of broken heart as well, like that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I, I understand that. Um, like, it, it did basically just fry his life support. That's why uh, Darth Vader doesn't ever use Force Lightning because yeah, he, 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 he had the power, but it just it just messed with his life support, so he couldn't do it. Like, like, fire like, off his I'm really mad. <laughs> 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 so, well, move, moving so forward with um, the new canon. I've not yet read the Aftermath trilogy. Now, I know there are some hints in the last book that um, Palpatine is obsessed about going out to the unknown regions, regions of the galaxy and looking for the source of the dark side. Um, now, I know we've touched on this before, I think, in a previous show, where the Snokes actually come from the unknown regions. Um, but would you have liked to have seen, or would you like to see more of that explored in a, a future film? Rather than read it out in the books, you know, maybe like if they, even if they do a an animated series, see Palpatine communicating with Snoke, or what else he was doing when he was chilling out on Coruscant all those years. Um, personally, I, th I think it'd probably be best left to the imagination. There's a lot of stuff with like the bad guys often are. It's like seeing Anakin kill a bunch of like Jedi's and stuff was nowhere near as cool as just imagining in it. Mm -hmm. So I, th I, th I think it's probably going to be the same way with uh, Palpy and yeah. uh, exploring fear out of regions. Mm. Sarah? Mm, leave it to the imagination. Imagination. Okay, doke. And one more question. I want to drag it out too long. Your, your, your opinion's not worth anything on that. <laughs> 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 I, I pretty much agreed with you anyway, so... Yeah. You know. Do you think, in hindsight, that uh, the Emperor's death was a bit lame being chucked down the reactor shaft? You know, and you've seen all the build-up in the prequels. Absolutely not, no. No, do you still love it? Uh, you're, you're, that's, you're, a, that's the coolest death of all time. That's how, that's how I hope I die. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's favourite character, by the way, is the Emperor. Into just, just falling like, ah! It's like, it's massive. He must have been falling for so long. Did he hit anything on the way down? He's like, ah! 
He must have. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I don't, it's just, I'm it's still just, alive, but I'm very badly burned. <laughs> <laughs> just think that with all his powers, it's like when people find out, well, how did he die? Who killed him? He just <laughs> fell down a shaft. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit, he he oh, shaved he him down a shaft. Down the shaft. <laughs> I, I, I'm just kind of disappointed I didn't hit like. The Millennium Falcon, was he? <laughs> 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 you saw him floating in the atmosphere. Yeah. I, was like, I mean, Darth Maul had a worse death than the Emperor, really. Did. Well, he didn't die either, I mean, did he? No, no. So, well, he didn't die. so if Darth Maul didn't die getting chopped in half, surely the Emperor survived. Yeah, well, there is a recurring theme of getting shafted in Star Wars, isn't there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, Luke survived, <laughs> uh, Darth Maul survived, so there is precedent for long falls and surviving, but then again, massive explosion. So it's like... There was a big explosion, Whether, whether yeah. he could land... Because he was basically un uninjured, wasn't he? Like, other than just being really old. So he could have just landed, run to a shuttle, and flew off. I can't imagine him but, running. Because Jedi's can jump great heights, can't they? And let's mm, yeah, yeah. land. So and it can even run Luke. fast as well. Like you, it... you see it in the Phantom Menace where uh, Obi Wan and Qui Gon oh, yeah. are fighting the uh, droid Eckers. Or what's the what's the other name for them? Droid Car. Droid uh, Destroyers. Yeah, destroyers. Destroyers. Yeah, destroyers. Master yeah. Destroyers. Um, so you're all, yes. you're all happy with the Emperor's death, basically. Yes. Oh, yeah, just awesome. me who thinks it's a bit lame. Really? Why? Just Why just inside lame? the with all, I was fine with Should it. Should have been more difficult. I just think now after, you know, when you look back at now and you watch all six films, you'll be thinking, oh, he's going to get a really horrific death. They're going to, like, fry him and chop his head off. I think yeah. just choop over, over yeah, a shaft. That's, that's cool. Here's a film for kids, though. And yeah, it was like... Saw it was more, like I, I know a middle-aged man did, like, obsessing about it as well, but... Yeah. But no, it was what's, lame's probably not the fair <laughs> word. I just thought they've left it quite obvious that he could survive. It's almost mm. poetic in a way because Darth Vader was throwing away his inner demons. <laughs> Yeah. As well as the yeah. Emperor. All in one package. Oh. And on that note, we shall end the Chosen Ones segment for this time. But I think I do think Aww. I do think Palpatine <laughs> is one of the best characters in the prequels, actually. Oh, yeah, I think He's probably the best, right? He's, he's the only captivating person to watch in them films. And Ian McDiamond. Dermid Dermond, whatever <laughs> whatever we call him. Dermid. His, his portrayal was amazing, so... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he's coming back to do the voice in Rebels. Oh, Season yeah, four, which is good stuff as well. So you're so. going to get some more... More, more Emperor more. Palpatine. I can't get enough. Let us know what you think. If you want if you want to see a spin-off film with Palpatine, who would you have play him? Would you like to see a Netflix series? If you want to discuss him even more, just let us know and we'll uh, discuss Palpatine to death. <laughs> <laughs> he's already dead. He's already dead. Oh, yeah, yeah that's a good point. <laughs> Down the shaft. <laughs> Fair enough, we don't really do Chaos at Accounts Direct, but we do offer a whole range of services to help your business run more effectively, more efficiently, and make more money. For more information, call 0161 832 1399 or visit our website www.accountsdirect.biz. Accounts Direct, accountants on your side. Okay, so we're now going to finish off the interviews that uh, we did at uh, Star Wars Fan Fun Day. And first of all, we're going to uh, show you the interview we did with Femi Taylor, a.k.a. Ula from Return of the Jedi. Check it out. So we're here at Star Wars Fan Fun Day 2017, and it's not just fun day, it's a fun weekend this time because it's ten years. Yeah, Femi well, returning for the second, third time? No, second time. Second time? Yeah, second time. So I'm here with Femi Taylor, of course, from Return of the Jedi. But we're not going to talk about Star Wars first, we're going to talk about 
what you were doing in show business, how you got involved in show business in the first place. Right. Um, before yeah. we start talking about that Star Wars that everyone wants to talk about. <laughs> um, yeah, I was, um, it's funny because I was, when I was four years old, I, I, one of my best friends took me to a dance class and um, I went and I wasn't going to go and, I thought, and she said, why don't you come? I'm like, I don't really want to go. I want to you know, stay home and play with my dolls. And I went along and um, I came back home and I said, mommy, 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 I want to be a dancer. I found my passion when I was four and she said, Well Amazing. darling, can you do the splits? And I was trying to do the splits this way. And I said, Oh, I can't get down. She said, try the other way. And I tried and went split like that. She said, I think you'd be able to dance. She's gonna be simple <laughs> as well. So from from being four years old, from my first dance class, I just suddenly thought it was a liberation. I found a, a, a passion, I found a purpose. And from then, I did all my dance um, classes every week, three times a week. I did all my ballet exams, dance exams. And then, um, after my GCSEs, I got into this really good school called the London School of Contemporary Dance. I got in that, trained, and then there was an audition for this West End show. All right. Um, and back then, I wasn't allowed. We weren't allowed to audition. And if we auditioned, we got kicked out. So it was very, very secretive. And when I was trained, it was sort of contemporary. It wasn't any, it wasn't the sort of jazz or the, the commercial side. I was going to get into the company. But anyway, I was just for this West End show, American show, and they gave me one of the parts. And so my dad said, you have a choice. You get your equity card, you get experience, um, you can still train after that, or you can stay at the contemporary school. It'd be very really hard to get into a company because it's only one really good company. Um, and you know what path I chose? So I, I, both, I chose the, the chosen commercial side. Yeah. Well, that's the best form of education, really. It is. It? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Learn on the job. Learn on the job, yeah. That's pretty much what we're doing here, to be honest. <laughs> doing a very good job. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, so we've done that. You were involved in, in Cats as well? Yes, from that. I mean, I, I went to Germany for three months and did a film there called The Apple Film. And then um, I auditioned for Cats. And again, I wasn't going to audition. And something said, the higher forces said, go and audition. I auditioned for Cats. And you were in? And I got in. Original cast. All those years ago. So, um... So now we're going to talk about Star Wars. Well, Star Wars comes up next. <laughs> yes. So that's that's the next scene in the, in the Femi Taylor film. Yeah, chapter, chapter two. <laughs> yes, chapter two. How did the role of Ula come to you? Well, I was doing Cats at the time, yeah. and my agent called up, and she said, they're casting for this film, and um, they won't tell. I keep, won't tell us what it is. I keep pestering, saying, what is it? They said, we can't say, we can't say anything, we can't say anything. But she's got to turn up, she's going to go... Um, yeah, she's going to be able you know, to dance and um, she's going to go in her bikini and to meet the director at, at Twickenham Film Studio. So, yeah. being a trained dancer, I'm taking my, 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 my career seriously. I thought this is just ridiculous, but I'll do something again. The high force is told me to go along. Uh, every time I'm not going to go, something pushes me to go. Yeah. It's a life changing um, decision to come out of it. So, I went along and. Um, I saw Richard the late Richard Marquin and he asked me a few questions and he said that look I'm so sorry but I've asked you to come in your bikini because the, the role that you're going up for we need to see your body shape and we need to know if you can dance so I, I reluctantly took off my coat and felt very very um, uh, uh, conspicuous doing it and then he just asked me to walk up and down pray and, uh, uh, and I did it anyway and he said yeah you look yeah you look alright and then he said well I'd like to call you back for a second audition but this time you've got to dance. Can you dance? And I'm really confident dancer. Absolutely, that's my that's my part. So I went back and had this grueling audition, and um, I still didn't know what it was. I still didn't tell us what it was. And then I was busy in my bag getting something, and someone said, "Here, here, what's this next? What's this? What's this all about?" I remember that. What's this all about? And they said, "Oh, it's the next Star Wars film." And then we went, "Oh my goodness!" And then when I went back, I was seeing cats at the time, so I went back. Um, that evening and took the frog for back and he said to him, I don't want to say anything but I think you did the wrong and then when I got back to the stage door I had a call from my agent to say that can they call can I call the next morning and they talk amazing mm. so what was it like being on, on the actual set what's your memories of 
I'm um, shooting it for the first time. I have lovely memories. I have lovely memories. But I had done a couple of films. Actually, I think I'd done one film for that, the other film. So I wasn't phased by you know being on set and the, 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 the magnitude of it all. It was just, for me, it was stepping into a job, doing it, and stepping out. But the set was great because it was in the palace. They built it. It was massive. Um, we also had Kai Fisher and Mark, the late Kai Fisher, sorry, and Mark, and Billy and um, Bob Fett, Jeremy Bullock, and Mark Cast. I mean, I had the, I had the Harrison Ford. They were all there on set with me and because they were shooting the scene before that and after. Ken Lake, Kelly Baker, Anthony Dad were all on my scene. It was fantastic. And the atmosphere was so lovely because, again, all actors, we were just there to do our job, to make sure we did our job and go home again but um, it was it was really nice and there was lots of times I was just sitting on that phone waiting to be waiting for my scene to be shot yeah. we had little chats and it was just really nice it was like a family amazing mm. so and of course um you know, the film came out and you were recognised all around the world and this has obviously led to you coming out and going around the world again doing all these signings and stuff like that. But then in, would it have been 96 maybe? Oh yeah. Because uh, they came out in 97 you got another call to go I got, back? Yeah, it was 95 I got another call. Out of the blue I got a call again saying that we're trying to um, find you. We were trying to find you for about six months and they didn't think they were going to find me and I still I had this other interview. I just hadn't... To this day, I have no idea how they found me. And I didn't tell anybody I was going to New York. I just thought, how did they find me? And she managed, and I was staying in the Chelsea Hotel with my best friend. She's living there, and, she, and that, there was a message. I just don't know. Anyway. Wow. The high force. The Lucasfilm spies. And they're spies. <laughs> Good job. So that's how they, they found me. And they said, we'd, we'd like to revamp, but we'll probably have to blue screen. Jabber and t- because of the technology had moved on. So, yeah. Um, but the one main thing is you've got to fit in your original costume because we've got to mer- now we can merge things together. I want to have a continuous thing from Ula's how she dies and how what happens. So yeah. 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 And you didn't look any different. That was the Thank main you. thing. No, that was all gone. Yeah, if I looked different, they told me they put me on the top. So incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so um, in terms of like the signings and stuff like that, how, how long's how long's that been going on? You know what, it's been going on for about 20 years, um, on and off. Uh, and I was doing Jesus Christ Superstar, the Lyceum, in 1997. Such a long time ago. And I remember somebody, the one, this director and the producer came, and I was going to do this film. It didn't, it didn't happen. And then they said, you know, there's a whole new there's this business, this Star Wars convention. Have you done this? And no, I had no idea what they were. So that's how I was introduced to the Star Wars Village back then. So Amazing. it was 20 years, yeah, 20 years ago. 20 years, wow. Yeah. So what's next? What are you, what are you up to um, next? I'm at the moment doing, a, actually I'm doing a play at the moment. It's going to be at the Chelsea Theatre. Um, and I, my part plays someone, her daughter is... Uh, it's about addiction. Or it's five main characters. One's addiction. One is alcoholism. One's homeless. One's like, it's an interesting subject. Mine's about addiction. My my, cat, my daughter gets addicted, and then I get addicted. Anyway, right, it's okay. really good. It's really good. So I'm rehearsing for that. So I'm going to try to learn my lines at the moment. Remember them. <laughs> so we'll, we'll look forward to seeing that. Yep. Thank Excellent. you very much. Then Femi, thank you, Femi Taylor. Thank you. Good old Femi Taylor, eh? Mm. Isn't she great? Nice lady. So uh, next, we're going to do uh, the interview uh, with Paul Weston, who's a legendary stuntman who's worked on Return of the Jedi, and he's also uh, got parts in Rogue One. He worked on Raised Lost Ark, loads and loads of stuff. Great guy. Check this out. Right, so we're here again at uh, Star Wars Fan Fun Day 2017. It's the weekend as well, of course, and I'm sat here with Mr. Paul Weston, who, of course, was involved with Return of the Jedi, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and countless other films, including James Bond. That's right. Yeah. Um, so, Paul, first of all, let's let's talk about how you got into um, into stunt work and, and and how you got into the film industry in the first place. Uh, well, I was um, I was an engineer in uh, in North London in the factory, and I didn't like it very much. It was very dirty. And, and I said to one of the older fellows there, I said, Eric Allen, you've been working here. He said, thirty-eight years, man and boy. I said, thirty-eight years. I said, where do you live? He said, round the corner. I said. I said, have you always lived there? He said, no, I used to live around the other corner. 
I thought, I cannot do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> so, and I knew in those days that the Evening Standard had two pages of situation vacants all over the world. So I went home, closed my eyes, and pointed down, and I told myself whatever job that was, okay. no matter where it was in the world, I was going to go after it. And so they said no, I was going to pursue them. Uh, and if they said no, I would go back and do it again. So I went home, opened up the pages, went like that, looked down, and it said, the London School of Charm requires models. Leicester Square, London. This is ridiculous. I can't be a model. I was in, in a, working in a factory, you know. Top and boy. So um, I thought, to be true to myself, I've got to phone up. As soon as they hear my voice, they say, no, thank you very much, and I'll be able to go and finish up <laughs> in Alaska on the pipelines or yeah. anywhere in the world. I was, so, but they hadn't said no, so I phoned up and, and they said, uh, come along. So I thought, well, as soon as they see me, they'll, they'll say, yeah, they don't want me. But they said, yes, OK, come and be good. Uh, um, uh, Guys, this is a final call for a photographic uh, and for the uh, fashion model. So I became a photographic and fashion model. Wow. Uh, so that got me into the, into the industry. And then I got an agent who sent me to understudy Roger Moore on the old Saint series. And... Uh, while I was doing that, I was standing in for Roger and, and doing bits and little parts. And one of the parts they gave me was a fight. And I had to fight one of the stuntmen, uh, Fred Eggerty. And yet they threw me through some crockery and stuff. It was easy. So they said, oh, well, that was good. You did that well. Can you double for somebody else on the next episode? I said, how much? No? Yeah, absolutely. So then I started doing stunts, and I, I went on to do Double Prestige on the Avengers, and uh, all the, the, the guys all over, all the um, TV series. Jason King, I had long hair and a big moustache. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, that's, that was my start into actual, the, the big movies. And then I got on to um, the, the Dirty Dozen, it played a part in Dirty Dozen, and then... Wow got into um, you know a bridge too far it had stunts and uh, never stopped really Superman 1, 2 and 3 um, so I was stunt uh, doubling for um, Chris Reed and um, I was a stunt coordinator as well so that really got me into the, the, wow fantastic big, big so well we're here to talk about Star Wars today of course so so we need to talk a little bit about Return of the Jedi. Um, yes. So, I mean, obviously, you'd, you'd had a massive career up until that point anyway. Mm -hmm. Done lots of big movies. Um, I assume it was just another job? Yes, yeah. They, they got called me down to Pinewood and we tested all the costumes and whatever. Then they said, well, uh, we're going over to uh, California to do the exteriors. So I said, yes, fine. Uh, and... Uh, Suddenly we were in California, as uh, you know. Um, they didn't. They tried to keep it as quiet as possible, so that the film was called um, uh, Blue Harvest: A Horror Beyond Imagination. Uh, and we were sp supposedly sneaking into America, really, because they didn't want anyone to know that the Star Wars people were there. So we was all in the queue going into uh, uh, Minneapolis and St. Paul. They didn't want us to go into L.A. because it was too direct. Sure. So we, we went into Minneapolis and St. Paul, and the guys were a bit wary of us because we were told that we are, to, to tell them that we were only tourists. So we were trying to sneak in, and they were very suspicious, the, uh, the, the guards there, and uh, <laughs> the... And they, they were asking us all sorts of questions. Oh, no, no, I don't know him and uh, all that was going on. <laughs> and they, they got uh, Stuart Freeborn. It was his turn. And he had a little c case with him, box. So they said, what's in the case? He said, well, it's just some stuff I'm bringing in. What's in the case? So he had to open it up and took out Chewbacca's head. <laughs> <laughs> and they went, oh, you're the Star Wars people, come in. <laughs> and we just walked through, it was wonderful. But it was, uh, yeah, once we was down there in Yuma, it was uh, back down to work, you know, and uh, yeah. it was very hot, and especially in the costumes. We had, you know, rubber hands, and yeah. uh, they used to feed us through uh, long straws and open up their mouths and put fans in there because it was 
uh, as I say, 110, 120 sometimes. And uh, we were in the sand dunes, and the heat just coming off the sand was enough. And then when you got a fight, uh, uh, it was uh, was warm. But then I had a fight with Billy D. Williams and his stunt double, and his stunt double's cable broke, and he fell on top of me and broke my leg. So I fell into the silent wow. pit with a broken leg. You're joking. Yeah. So was that um, was that Corey D. Williams then, his, his son? No, it was uh, Julius, uh, J- Julius Lafleur. But then... Ah. Um, Later on, um, his son took, did a bit on it. Took over, yeah. 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 So you would have worked with Peter Diamond as well, I assume. Yes, yeah? yeah, for many years I'm with Peter. I, one of my first auditions was with Peter Diamond uh, in 1964. Wow, so that's a long time then. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so then from Return of the Jedi, um, you, you moved on and you've just recently done a role in, uh, in Rogue One, yeah? Yes, I also was in um, uh, Force Awakens. I doubled for uh, Max von Sydow uh, in ah. the opening sequence. Yeah, uh, and then they phoned me for uh, to play the engineer, one of the engineers on the Rogue One, and I've also done a bit on the one that's coming out. Oh, fantastic! Um, on uh, the Last Jedi. The Last Jedi, right? So. Um, what, what have you noticed in the difference since um, you know it's obviously the the series is, is going over to Disney and and uh, you know obviously there's been a lot of yes well, developments um, with technology since but what have you noticed the difference uh, between apart from the paranoia then and now oh the paranoia yeah. you can't do anything can't mention anything when you walk onto the set when I was doing uh, uh, the Force Awakens. Uh, I went to makeup and hair, and then and they said, we need you on the set. So they came to my dressing room, put a cloak over me, and guided me onto the set. I did my bit, took, took the cloak off, I did my bit, put it back on, it helped me back to the... <laughs> no one could see what I was wearing or whatever. It was just... The paranoia is amazing. Um, but apart from that, the technology has gone on, and... The biggest thing that um, I've noticed, and I used to love wire work because I did Aliens and I did Superman and uh, it was all wires, and um, is the wire work, that the technology that's gone into wire work these days is phenomenal. We get our guys, the stormtroopers, being wound back and flown all over the place. And that's not digitally enhanced, that is our stunt guys in those costumes being blown up and thrown around and, and whatever. So and then they could just rub the wires out then afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Just yeah. when I used to double fly for Superman, we took them down to 18 gauge piano wire, literally a, um, a cord from the piano. Uh, and it was so thin because they couldn't get rid of them. Yeah. If they wanted to get rid of wires, they had to blow up each frame and paint it out. So we would line up wires against buildings to see if we could get away with it. Um, and then one time when the burglar was going up the side of the building on Superman uh, 1 um, and Superman arrives and he falls backwards I was doing that sequence where Superman flies down to catch him oh yeah and as I was flying because we had the um, uh, the side of the building on the floor with the burglar falling along the floor (laughs) and I was standing there and I took off over the top of him but the wires broke and uh, I fell on my head and broke my cheekbone and damaged my wrists. Um, but the wires broke and then we realised that wires do break. So then we started using Bowden cable, which is uh, maybe up to six little thin wires, but all together. Uh, these days you can have a cable as thick as that on your back. Yeah. So when you see people um, doing high falls or, or whatever, or actors flying around, you know, they were safe as houses. <laughs> yeah. We were doing it for real, and uh, I'm wise that really weren't safe. The injuries to prove it. Yes. But <laughs> I, remember, um, I remember seeing an, an interview with Harrison Ford after the, uh, the last Indiana Jones film, and they were saying that uh, he was able to do, I know he doesn't say he does stunt work, he mm. says he does running, jumping and falling down, but yeah. um, he was able to do more than he was in the other three films because of the wire work. Yes, yeah, yeah so, absolutely. Um, and what was interesting is that um, when I broke my leg on uh, 
Return of the Jedi. Uh, I was on crutches and he, I was there for another week or so. Uh, and he would, when if he wasn't working, he would drive me down to the town and we would get all, do a bit of a, uh, shopping for the crew if anybody wanted anything. So he'd be driving, and we'd go into the shops. And uh, the girls would say, oh, you're Harrison Ford, aren't you? And he'd go, no, 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 I, I'm his stunt double, it's Harrison over there, there's me on crutches. <laughs> so when I, I go on to um, uh, the, t- uh, the Force Awakens, yeah. I was waiting for um, uh, uh, Harrison to come out the stage uh, to say hello after all those years, you know? And suddenly everyone came out and said, everyone back to their dressing rooms, there's been an accident. Uh, oh. And he broke his leg and uh, I couldn't get to him and help him like he helped me oh, what a all shame. those years before. What a shame. Yeah. Well, Paul Weston, ladies and gentlemen. Pleasure. Thanks very it's much. A pleasure. Thank you. Okay, folks, that brings us to the end again of Force Talker Star Wars podcast. Uh, we'll be back again, of course, in two weeks to... Uh, dissect the hell out of more Star Wars stuff but Michael you've uh, yeah got a little um, something to share yeah I've got a couple of videos which will be uploaded onto the YouTube channel um, it's my reviews of the Sideshow Collectible Luke Snow Speeder Pilot figure uh, six scale and the Scout Trooper from Rogue One as well so check those out on the YouTube channel really quite gorgeous as well those figures mm, uh, didn't you want to say hello to somebody? I do. I just want to say hi to Beth and her boyfriend. I was on holiday for the last show. I had a great time in Madeira. So, hi, Beth. Hope you're watching the show. Hope you're well. Hello there. <laughs> and uh, we'll be seeing you again in two weeks' time. Until then, may the force be with you. Bye, Beth. Bye. Okay. Right, so it's the end of the show. It's the end of the show. Let's keep the bubbliness going for just another couple of minutes. Okay. <laughs> and then we can sleep. <laughs> yes. Okay. It's, it's We're rolling. It's getting now. Ah, wank, I think. <laughs> that's it, yeah, that's going in. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just getting, just getting the energy up before the end, so yeah, we go. <laughs> you got all the material you needed. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? He said wank, wank I, I think. think.